Hey guys, welcome back. We are at the Cosmopolitan. Tonight is the grand opening of this. You know, one of the things that's really fun to do on New Year's Eve is to look back on the year before. Uh, it's especially fun if you got a, like, a guy like George Knapp around to do it for you. Last year was sort of men behaving badly with governors and senators and the hangover and, you know, all those kind of things. Sure. This year changed. Yeah, this year was a little bit more like girls gone wild. At least that, that, that's according to George Knapp. Tonight is some of the scandals, the embarrassing moments, the crazy behavior that made this year so memorable. If ever Las Vegas needed a hero, 2010 was it. This town needs an enema. And we got one. In fact, dozens. Superheroes, even. Caped crusaders and their costume sidekicks. What are you? I'm Batman. Camped out on the strip to hustle tourist dollars and sometimes to fight for prime locations against their arch rivals. Yeah, we have Turf War versus Showgirl. Showgirl. Uh, we have Superman versus Batman. <laughs> they, they actually, we took uh, one of the Elvises, one of these guys, to jail last week because they got into a fight. For gosh sakes, we hope all those costumed hustlers don't crowd out the poor smut peddlers. There are barely any of them left. Is it just us, or does it look like Wonder Woman has seen better days? Ditto for Maryland. It's been a tough year for women in general, which might explain why the girls have gone wild. Why else would a shy, demure Dana Roselli dance around on Carrot Top's desk? And is the Clark County Courthouse any place for an innocent homebody like Paris Hilton, who only got into trouble because she accidentally handed a package of Coke to a cop? She was banned from the wind because, you know, Las Vegas casinos just won't tolerate any one who uses drugs. No siree. How will Paris survive without clubbing? She can always try out for the Lingerie Football League, which had no trouble getting Las Vegas sports reporters there for the unveiling of their new uniforms. My guy friends are like, you guys really run plays and you know what you're doing. No gal was wilder in 2010 than Sharon Angle, who developed a masterful strategy for wooing Hispanic voters, telling them that to her, they look like Asians. I don't know that all of you are Latino. Some of you look a little more Asian. Oh, and she said she gets mistaken for being Asian all the time, you know, because of her uncanny resemblance to Lucy Liu. Our former colleague Sue Loudon is still wondering how in the world she lost to Angle in the primary. The consensus? Because she underestimated just how humorous chickens can be. Chickens for checkups went viral, but it had a happy ending. Governor Jim Gibbons was so impressed by the proposed barnyard barter system, he appointed Loudon to the state medical board. No, really. Bring a chicken to the doctor. What a year it was for the stable of fillies linked to our love gov. Stories about his extramarital fling surfaced again and again, in part because of a nasty, prolonged divorce, and also because of a federal lawsuit filed by a former cocktail waitress who says Gibbons manhandled her. One sworn deposition in the case came from Wendy Mazeros, who testified she was aware of Gibbons' affairs with Kathy Karash, the wife of a Reno doctor, and Leslie Durant, who once bared her charms for readers of Playboy. Wendy testified that Leslie expected to be Mrs. Gibbons someday. She called him, that's my Jimmy. That's my Jimmy. That's my Jimmy. When he found out the I-team planned to report on Wendy's deposition, an angry Jimmy left this message. And I plan to litigate for slander and libel against you personally, George Knapp personally, and your station if you put it out there. The lawsuit never came, but we did get a copy of Gibbons' own deposition in the federal case in which he made the most embarrassing denial a guy can make, saying he did not have sex with Kathy or Leslie or anyone, including his wife, for many years. Yikes. Even if that doesn't ring true, we're pretty sure Gibbons is celibate now, taken out of action by a broken pelvis. Fellow philanderer John Ensign was the subject of secret interviews recorded in this hotel by Senate ethics investigators who had no idea the I-team was watching, the senator showed nifty footwork in D.C. as he not only dodged criminal charges, but also darted away from the I-team's Jonathan Humbert, who, now that we think about it, was the same guy in a hoodie who jumped Jim Gibbons at the Reno airport and made this poor woman hide in a bathroom for 30 minutes because she coincidentally was on the plane with Jimmy back from Washington, where they may or may not have posed for photos with other gubernatorial womanizers. Not to be out done in ambushing hard-to-get politicians was Nathan Baca, whose memorable mobile chats with a fleeing Sharon Angle proved that while Angle might not think on her feet all that well, she sure can walk 
work on them. 2011 will mark the end of the Oscar era. Who will ever fill the shoes of our shoot from the hip, gin swilling mayor? How about his good friend, porn meister Larry Flint, who told us he just might run? In all likelihood, this will be the final year end recap report on Channel 8 or any other channel. That's because by this time next year, those harmless robot sentries that were put into action out at the test site will have activated Skynet and will reign supreme as our robotic overlords. Happy New Year, everyone. George Knapp, 8 News Now.